Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the Motorcycle Rescuer and I am the Motorcycle Rescuer. So yes, welcome back. Exciting day today, I think, guys. I've got a brand new upgraded battery for the Harley. That's good news. Um, we've, had, we've had two stunning days this week for biking. Um, we're still working on John's bike, but that's a separate video. And I've got the parts to do the, the next moto calf scrambler brat style-ish bike. Honestly, I don't know what I'm building. I would call it a, a classic scrambler style bike. However, I'm not putting knobblies on. So I think that makes it a brat, uh, but actually guys, let me know in the comments what you think it becomes. Now I'm going to mock it all up after so you're going to see it, but honestly, I bought four parts for the bike at 90 quid. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. A new fuel tank, a new flat track seat unit, a rear number plate holder and rear light. And four indicators, 90 quid guys, come on, you can't go wrong. If you've got a, a Lex Moto and it's looking a bit tired on the bodywork, you can create yourself something similar. I think, I think, I don't know if this is going to work, I'm not that skilled. Um, I'm just going to try my best to get it to work. But for me today, this big old ugly battery that's busted needs to come out of my Harley. And the new one over there needs to go in. It's a Moto, Moto bat battery, uh, John, you are... Uh, recommended that i've never heard of it um moto bat but actually it's a higher ah i think than the original although i'll check that in a minute now you've seen me mess around with these bat my battery before getting it out to charge it it's such a pain in the ass you have to take apart both sides of the bike you have to kind of work it out in there and then you kind of hammer it out because you can't take the top off the bike um, but I'm going to get in there in a minute and I'll show you roughly what we're talking about before we get on to our real project today Which apart from John's um, Is uh, is the our Lex Moto Calf Brat Scrambler style thing. Okay guys, so let me get the battery out. Let me start messing with the, the Harley Davidson now notice the car has gone Someone came last night uh, And paid 300 for it now actually we paid our friend 360 for it so we lost 60 quid, but actually I had a garage defender for a week, um, which was cool. So the car just sat on the garage. But actually, uh, that that's the long and short of all these projects. I think John's had a bit of a uh, hard time with the projects recently. But the main thing is we haven't lost a pound. Um, we haven't lost a pound. So, for example, the, the Lex Moto build hasn't gone so well. And the, the Le this Lex Motor build, to an extent, didn't go too well. It took a long time. But ultimately, the Honda CBF ties you over. And I don't mean money-wise. I mean emotionally. You build one good bike, and then it's okay to recognize that there's a couple of builds out of your league. You know, this Lex Motor here needs a new engine. Let's, let's be honest. It needs a new engine. We're not breaking that engine down to the crank. It's not worth it. No point. Uh, that's out of your league. Someone can have it. Someone can keep fiddling with it for cheap enough or sell it for parts that's fine but uh yeah sometimes we recognize what's going on all right guys so when doing the battery in this thing what's best to do is you've got a your earth goes down here to the frame okay so earth goes down into frame you take that one off and you pull it through and it comes out attached to your battery which is here and then of course you switch that over to the other side um, now, the old battery, which is original, is a 12AH225CC M, which is cranking power. The new battery is, what is it? It is, ah, there you go, 16.5AH240CC A. So actually, um, it is definitely a better battery. So the orientation we want is this one. Uh, and yeah, and this battery should be fine for a good few years now guys uh, That's a Harley Davidson battery. It's the original one to the bike. So that will be five years old um, 
in fact, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, yeah, yeah, it's exactly five years old. Um, so that's about right, that's about normal. Cool, I'm gonna switch these over and I'm gonna feel great that I now have my bike back on the road. Um, I can't stand having vehicles that don't start on the button, it really bugs me. Okay guys, so battery's in. Uh, this side panel happens to be in uh, my car because it stopped running not long ago, but look. It wasn't doing anything before. So that's absolutely great. Um, again, I just, I, I like being able to turn the key on a vehicle. Um, I know that seems a bit silly, but uh, there's people out there who will charge their batteries every week or trickle charge, etc. Um, I want mine to be working properly always. All right, guys, so we're at the best part of the day. Guess what we just rescued? We rescued a uh, Mitsubishi Evo 7, I believe. Uh, FQ 340 with uh, an, an upgraded engine in it. I'd love to show you the engine. In fact, maybe I will in a minute. Um, this is my friend's car. It's a beast. He's just put a new engine in, upgraded everything, uh, and it needs a remap now. Uh, however, it's been sitting a few weeks, so I've got my charger on it. We're boosting the battery, which is in the boot. Now, I used to have an Evo 6, guys, so it was one shape before this. Um, personally, I would pick the 6 over the 7. I, I think this is a 7 or 8. Um, I liked the squareness of the 6. Uh, but, um, oh my God, Evolution's just stunning cars. Pain in the ass, lots of money, but, oh, just the best cars. If I could get my black Evo 4 back, it would be well worth it. Um, well, I'm going to put out the next motor and we're going to start opening up some parts. This is the best part of my day. I've been looking forward to this. And uh, let's see what the tank looks like, the rear seat looks like, the indicators and the blah, 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 whatever else is there. All right, everyone. Apology about the noise in the background. Let's see what we've got. We've got these indicators. Cheap and cheerful. They're metal. They're bulbs. Um, they're good, they're going to look great on this bike, the bike's going to be black mainly. This rear tail light, again cheap and cheerful, I've used it before. Um, it does the job it's meant to do. Now let's have a look at the uh, seat. Yep, absolutely uh, should do the job. And let's have a look at the tank. Absolutely should do the job. Exciting. Check this out, guys. Custom manifold. Evo 9 turbo. Bigger radiators. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right, John's over here. So we got the new tank for the uh, Lex Moto. Now we want the tank to sit quite flat, so we need to kind of peel away some bits, maybe even the uh, data tool and the uh, ECU potentially. John's just weakening this bracket so that uh, we can sit the tank on more flush. Um, he's just basically fatiguing it, and then it will snap off at the right point. What we might need to do is put a bit of paint or something on there making sure it doesn't rust. So at this stage, all you might get to see is a tank sitting on there in a minute. So we'll show you what's going on with that. So here we go. My not so beautiful assistant is putting on the tank. Oh man, that sits so well. Wow, John, that looks like a CB400. Or a, um, wow, that looks like a CB400. That is kind of how I want it and all. I want it sitting up. So it may be that we end up bolting it somewhere here. Um, I do want it sitting up. I don't want that falling in. Uh... 
All right, guys, to see the kind of new-ish way the rear end and the tank's gonna sit, we need to remove the rear panels because the bike has does have a kind of funny shaped frame. So let's remove this rear panel and we'll we'll sit the seat on and the tank and we'll see how flush we can get it basically. I mean, John, this seat was what, 30 quid? I mean, these parts, there's no excuses nowadays. If people out there want to try customising, now's the time. No excuses. Oh, what a beauty. What a beauty. I don't even need to tape it down or anything. It can just sit like that. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, what we might need to do is cut the rear of the frame. So it might be, I think the tank sat there, didn't it, John? Yeah. So the seat will sit there. So I think we'll chop away. As long as we've got, although the brace is there, where's the next brace? So the brace is there. We can chop behind the brace. So we're probably gonna be sitting like that. Um, there you go, guys. Um, what I mean by the brace is that if you're ever chopping a frame, you've got two options. You can run a loop in the back, which is fine. This one doesn't have a loop anyway. It has a cut off end or you can cut up to the last brace. Um, now for me, uh, I'll be cutting here up to the end brace um, and not fitting a loop. The loop's unnecessary for this kind of application. Uh, but you get a idea there. Uh, we'll slot the tank on in a minute and you'll see roughly what this little kind of basic custom bike is gonna look like. Uh, and it's, you know, it's fine. It, it's gonna do a basic job. Uh, forget the exhaust for now. The exhaust is big and ugly and rough. I am looking into what exhaust will go on there. I have an idea in mind, but I'm not sure if it'll work. I have a kind of slight plan, but I'm not sure how it'll work. Uh, I may, I'll probably remove these hangers. They're not necessary. Um, <laughs> get a, a Kona. Um, Right, me and John will keep working at this for a minute and we'll let you know, we'll kind of show you roughly where we're at. Um, again, we, you know, we don't know exactly what we're doing at this stage, but it's going to involve stripping the rear end down a bit, getting the tank kind of seated where we think it will work, mocking up the, the seat as well to again where we think it will work and then looking around that, how we make everything else work. Okay guys, so this is kind of roughly what we're looking at, very roughly at this stage. Um, it's fine, it works. To be fair, right, we could use this tank with the original panel work and not mess with any of this. Uh, in fact, I may try, I may look at that. I'm gonna put the rear panel back on. Give me a moment, I'm gonna put the rear panel back on and see if the seat works with that. So, um, of course that doesn't work, but it could be that when I chop down the frame back here, which, which we're doing anyway. I'm gonna chop down the frame back here. Could be that that panel then sits more flush and will work. I'm gonna look at that at the time. For now, it's gonna be frame chop, clean the rear up, and look at mounting. Um, now, the brackets that come with the seat are this here, and they just kinda of go under and sit on the bar. I don't know if they're gonna work technically. Um, there's no huge rules about the rear seats guys there's no major rules um, in fact there's no huge rules about the tanks the tanks to an extent um, can be on a bungee cord uh, in fact racing motorcycles used to have their tanks on um, on rubbers and they used to pop them off switch the tanks over to ones that were already full and race so you are still allowed that i'm not saying i'm going to do that there's no actual solid rules obviously we want to make sure it is solid and secure we're going to use the um the bolt work to, to kind of decide how we're securing down to the frame, but then we will be securing, yeah, ultimately to the frame. So, uh, right, me and John will do some off camera work here. It's gonna look stuff like, it will look like, um, I think we'll chop away these handles, you don't need them. Uh, and then we're gonna be chopping here. I may even go in front of that brace. I may even go to here. 
Um, I may. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look at that. So I'm gonna clean up the rear end now, and then we're gonna look at what we've got. But we've got a big old gap between the tank and the seat, so that much needs to come off, and that's fine. I'm. I'm. I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. I wouldn't do anything to a bike if I felt it was structurally unsafe. So let's have a look. And actually, I've I've pulled the tank back a little bit, but I think from a steering perspective, yeah, I think it kind of does have to sit there anyway. It can go a touch forward, but that's kind of the style we're looking at. And I think already, I don't know what you think, John, but already I think for me the bike looks more um, Honda CB already, actually. Um, the bars are a bit big for me. I'm not keen on the bars for this style of bike now. I'm not sure the Rentful style bars. It might just be that we slide everything on and cut them down a touch. Um, John mentioned that last week. But we're making a cheap, basic custom build here, guys. So it's, it's going to be... It's going to be basic, actually. Um, some of the frame that might need touching up will probably use a black hammerite. It's good for, um, for rust. It's good for protection. The rear swing arm, again, we might use a black hammerite. We'll get this exhaust off for now, see what we can do with it. It's just going to be cleaning up, building, and seeing where we go from there. This is real fabrication work, guys. Do I go higher, John? Woo! All right, guys, so we've started our cuts with the Dremel, but it's quite hard to get all the way around um, straight. So what we need is a couple of fresh blades for the hacksaw there. So me and John are going to do a quick run, and we'll get that sorted. I've just sealed the uh, fuel tap onto the tank. Um, now, you've got to be very careful with these tanks. To, you know, it's paper-thin paint, um, if, if, if that thick, actually. Um, so you've got to be very gentle with them, but they are going to achieve what you want them to do. Honestly, if you're buying one of these cheap tanks, guys, here's my advice. Get it out of its packet, buy some of the Max Pro XP stuff that um, Nat uses, and I use myself sometimes, and layer it up. Then your, your paintwork will pop massively. Follow Nat's rules, um, you know, three days later in regards to sanding it down and polishing it. And I swear, you'll have a tank that lasts much longer, looks better, and doesn't scratch when you look at it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, this is going to do the job we want it to do. But if you want a real long-term fix, get one of these tanks for whatever they are, 50 quid. Layer them up with some uh, petrol system lacquer, and then you'll be fine. I'm, I'm pleased so far with the progress we've made. Um, I think we're going to have a bike that looks how we want it to look today. Uh, I think I'm going to pop off the exhaust today because um, either we have to use this exhaust or um, or we have to kind of put a new one on. But either way, it needs a good coat um, of paint. Now, I, I, I'm wondering if the Lex Moto Tempest high-level scrambler exhaust would fit on this. So it comes out here and it goes up just under the seat. That would look amazing. Um, and you can get them for kind of 80 quid, but I, you just don't know if it's going to fit at the top end. So we'll work that out. The other thing I can do, which I've done many times before, is you cut the exhaust down here and you put a nice loud slip on down there. The bike looks stunning, nice loud slip on. Just about passes the MOT with my guys, just about. They'll give me a bit of a kick up the arse. Um, but that's the other option. Probably the option I'll go down, ultimately. But for now, we're off to do a blade run and uh, maybe pick up a snack. Alright guys, so look at the stance of the bike now. The exhaust really, really, really lets it down, but we'll sort that out. Uh, it, it looks much better. It looks much better. So, where are we now? So what we need to do now, let me throw on the tank and the seat. And now we'll just give you an idea of what it's going to look like in that setup. So one moment. <laughs> 